Oh, Canada. How we doing, everybody? It's your boy, Young Pasty, back again, breaking down UFC. It's going down in Canada, Edmonton, Canada. So I got the hockey jersey on. We got the maple syrup. It's really going down for this main event. Now, before we begin, please like the video, comment, subscribe, uh, share the video, support your boy Young Pasty in this UFC shit. We do it every single week. Secondly, we got to break down the last card. We'll keep it simple though. Picks, seven and six, we're on the positive side. Bets, plus 0.237 units. Again, we're on the positive side. It's nice to be on the, the, you know, the positive side of things this time. So we'll take it. Overall for UFC 2024, picks 55 and 29. Bets plus 1.997 units. So we'll take it and we'll move on. Now, <clears throat> for this Canada card here, we're doing something a little special. Every time I pick a Canadian fighter, we're taking a little swig of the maple syrup in honor of you know that, that that Canadian spirit. I hear they they love their maple syrup up there. I would get a you know a little coffee from Tim Hortons. I got one from Dutch, but you know, let me take a swig of that. By the way, they don't have Tim Hortons here, so I, I would have grabbed one from from there in, in honor of you guys. But no Tim Hortons here. Tim Hortons here. Anyway, for this main event, here we go, guys. I'm super excited to break down all these fights. Uh, we're going to flip the switch, though. Usually we start with the, the prelims. We're going to start with the main event this time and then go work our way down to the early prelims. We got Brandon Moreno, a.k.a. the Assassin Baby, versus Amir Albazi, a.k.a. the Prince. Brandon Moreno, the former champ, can be half or minus 160. Amir Albazi can be half or plus 135. This is going to be a really good fight. I'm excited for it. My pick for the fight, though, and we're going with the assassin baby. We got Brandon Moreno, and I'll give you all my reasons why I'm picking him for the fight. <clears throat> Cardio in a gas tank. That Mexican chin. Volume. Former champion, so he's been here, done that. He knows what five rounds looks like. And he's never been KO'd. Now, I know I said that, but Max Holloway, but we're not going to talk about that, okay? Anyway, that's why I got Brandon Moreno. He's got a little bit of a reach advantage. I wouldn't take it too much. Uh, takedowns for this. I, I, I see Amir Albazi kind of, you know, trying to get some clinch work onto the fence, then maybe taking him down there. It's not going to happen in the open octagon, I don't think. If anything, Brandon Moreno can flip it, flip it on the cage and take him down. But Amir Albazi is kind of suspect to me. He's way up on the UFC. I mean, he has wins. So I, you know, I can't discredit him for his wins, except for his last one, right? Against versus uh, Car Car France. Some shady judging in that fight. He definitely did not win, in my opinion. He's got power, believe me. But he was definitely gassing out in that fourth and fifth round when it came to those championship rounds, and that's when you know, you know, I, I think you know, he may have taken one, took one round in that fight, but I, I don't know. That judging was weird. I didn't think he won that last fight. Anywho, point being, Car Car France is elite competition. If I don't think he won that fight, now you're going up to the former champ trying to face Brandon Moreno. Not not this time, buddy. We got Brandon Moreno by decision. I I, I would believe if you want, you know want to get a better number here. Look at that. Okay, four and a half rounds minus two twenty. So the books. The books are anticipating that this fight's going to go all five rounds, which I, I would think so too. And again, I think Brandon Moreno, uh, you know, keeps a distance. If he gets hit or rocked, I mean, he's right there. He's going to land the, you know, land and throw the volume onto Amir. Uh, the Prince is going to get his second loss here. It's going to be a really good main event, but we got Brandon Moreno. All right. Co-main. Do we got any Canadians? No, just Americans in Canada. We got Aaron Blanchfield, a.k.a. Cold-Blooded. Okay, I like the nickname. AK and uh, versus Rose, Rose Thug Nama Nama Hunis. Okay, yeah, Thug Rose. Okay, you know, I, it's hard. It's, this is difficult. 
I like Rose, but I got to pick Aaron Blanchfield in this spot. I think she's going to be notably bigger when they go out into the octagon. I think Aaron has the better grappling and wrestling advantage. And Rose is just going to be much more skinny compared to Aaron, I believe, when they, when they actually get out into the octagon. Now, Rose has much more experience. Yes, Rose has faced much better competition. Aaron just lost to, um, what's her fuck, that French girl. Fioriat. And she's good, all right? I mean, she, you know, she put it on, on to Aaron for that five-round fight. But Rose also lost to that same girl, so... These girls have both lost to, to that, I and mean, she's a really good fighter. Okay, so I'll you know I'll give them credit where it's due there. Aaron's gonna be looking for the takedowns. Um, she was getting real tired in round four and five, and she knows this is a five round fight. So I would hope that she worked on her cardio here. She is seven years younger than Rose, twenty five versus thirty two. Um, that is a you know pretty big difference there. It's tough because I got love for Thug Rose, and I really do. And it, look, the odds are pretty pretty much even here. Uh, I had to go with Aaron though. She has a better wrestling advantage. She can strike too. She's gonna come more with like blitzes. Rose gonna be a little more technical, more box. Like if this fight goes, you know, standing five rounds and it's just a boxing match, Rose all day, Rose all day. But Aaron's gonna mix in the takedowns, come in with these weird kind of blitzes and punches. Um, not that Rose hasn't seen at all, but we got the we got cold blooded in this fight. We move on to a heavyweight fight. And hey, it's always exciting when the Black Beast comes out. Derek Lewis versus Jonte Denise. Lewis the underdog, plus 150. Jonte Denise, minus 180. Surprising to me that Lewis is the underdog in this spot, given his experience in the UFC and that Derek Lewis power. Jonte Denise is kind of suspect to me. I mean, yes, he has wins in the UFC, but they're not against anybody notable. Derek Lewis has been fighting for a minute, and he has power. He could even mix in takedowns, and I don't think Denise is very good at mixing in, you know, defending takedowns too too much. Uh, Derek Lewis is the pick. We got the Black Beast. Black Beast by KO. It's a three-round fight, so I don't, you know, Derek Lewis ain't gonna be gas. I mean, he could be gassing out the second, third round. He is thirty-nine. He said he's kind of been getting old for this shit. But he's got. I told you, he's got that Derek Lewis power, man. He's he's a monster. It's hard for me to doubt him. And he's an underdog. You're gonna disrespect the Black Beast. Put him as an underdog. Derek Lewis all day. We move on to the next fight. No Canadians again. When are we going to get some? You have a whole main event with no Canadians? Killing me. Anywho. We got Chao Machado versus Brenson Hibero. Chao Machado, the Bigfoot. Hibero, the Gorilla. Okay. Machado's the favorite, minus 160. Hibero at plus 135. Now, wee-woo, wee-woo, wee-woo. That's my do not bet alarm. I'm not touching this fight, guys, when it comes to the betting side. I really wouldn't. I have to make a pick. It sucks. I make a pick for every fight. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to make one here. They're, they both have similar stories in the UFC. They came up in the the Contender Series, won the Contender Series fight, and then go on to lose two fights in the UFC. Now, I will say Machado has gone up against better competition than Hibero. Machado didn't get knocked out. He went to decision, but he looked terrible on the ground. So if Hibero takes him down, I mean, phew, there goes your fight. Again, I'm a, I wouldn't bet on this fight at all, and I, I had to make a pick. I'm going to go with Machado with just because of his experience. They have this at light heavyweight, so Machado has to cut all that weight. Something to, to look to look at. 
When it comes weigh-ins, I'll let you guys know. This is why you need to follow me on Twitter. I'll give you all my pick updates and bet updates. I don't know if, yeah. This is a suspect fight, but we move on. All right, hey, we got a Canadian here. Are we going to do it? Are we going to swig this little maple syrup? We got Mark andre Barrialt versus Dustin Stolfus. What are these guys' nicknames? Oh, Power Bar, Canadian. Mark andre the Power Bar. Dustin does not have a nickname. We got Mark andre to, oh, wow, almost two-to-one favorite. Dustin Stolfus can be half for plus 160. My pick... For this fight. Woo! That's sweet! Woo wee! Okay. We got Mark Andre Barrial. We got the power bar in this fight. My dude's pretty durable. Dustin's very suspect. You're gonna, he dust, uh, uh, Mark Andre is going to, even though their height, the height difference is only one inch, he's going to be notably bigger than Dustin in that octagon there. He's got the hometown advantage. he got the people on his side. He lost last year in Canada. He needs to get his redemption here. He's gone up against, I think, better competition, in my opinion. Uh, is this fight going to get to the ground? I think Mark Andre has very good takedown defense. Very good takedown defense. I don't think Dustin's going to be uh, you know, whooping him on the ground. If it get, does get to the ground at some point, I think I think Power Bar can get back to the fence, work his way back up, and get to striking where that you know that's his advantage here. If it's three rounds of striking, it's Power Bar all day. Dustin got don't got the hands for it. Mark's a little bit slower. I, I mean, I would hope he would put on a little bit more volume. I hope he does, but. If anything, he's going to get the more powerful strikes in, in these exchanges here. So, KO, no. Decision, prob, over two and a half, is favorited. So, but the pick is going to be Power Bar, Mark andre Barrial. And we move on to the next fight. All right. Mike Proper Malat. Versus Trevin Giles. Mike Malott, minus 265 favorite. Pretty big favorite here, um, as he usually is. Trevin Giles can be had for plus 215. Oh, here we go again, guys. Mike Malott is the pick. Okay, this is better on pancakes. Why do I have Mike Malott in this fight? He looked pretty good in that Neo Magni fight up until he gassed out. He's in Canada now. He's another hometown favorite. Look, Trevin Giles is a durable and a pretty good striker too. Mike Malott can get this fight to the ground. Trevin Giles is suspect on the ground and can accept, posi you know, accept position sometimes on the ground, just laying there in guard. And Mike Malott's there to kill. He's usually a finisher. It's hard to put out Magny, but he gassed the fuck out, and that's why he lost that last fight. We got Mike Malott, though. It's a good pick. We got the Canadian. He's a very fierce man. We move on to the next fight. Oh my gosh, another Canadian. Are we going to do it again? Three times in a row. I don't know. Ayman Zahabi, a.k.a. no nickname, versus Pedro Munoz. Munoz? <laughs> Pedro Munoz. Uh, the Young Punisher. Now, when it comes to UFC 38, you might just want to call yourself the Punisher. You are a little bit on the older side, but... You haven't hit 40 yet. Anyway, I'm not judging your nickname. You could beat the shit out of me, even though you're 5'6", and I'm 6'5". 
Ayman Zahabi can be had for plus 105, Pedro at minus 125. I'm kind of sus- uh, you know, surprised by these odds, but we are taking the underdog in the Canadian for the third time in a row. I'm getting a little sugar rush here. Oh, wee. Okay. Now, why am I taking Zahabi? He's a, he's given himself a nice little four or five white four four or five fight win streak. I believe it's five four. And Vincent Morales in 2019, which is a, a a respectable loss, but he's gone up against very good competition and got some KOs and some decision wins. Especially that one over Basharat. That's a really nice notable win. Over Pedro Munoz. Who has not looked very good his this past three or four years? Who's you know thirty eight and kind of on his way out of the UFC? This is the prelim featured fight. It is going to be a pretty good fight. Pedro's not going to get KO'd here. This is definitely going to go over two and a half rounds. What are the odds? Oh my gosh! They all know. This is going to be a striking match, and Zahabi's going to be there all day. He's got a reach advantage. He's got more heart. He is hes just kind of coming into the UFC. If you, It's kind of weird to say that because it's been five, six years, but he has less fights but more more wins in that span than, than Munoz does. But I uh, just... I cannot see Munoz winning this fight. Zahabi's better on the feet, man. He's going to have a speed advantage, too. People are going to say Munoz does, but I think Zahabi has the speed advantage in this fight. So, Give me Zahabi, the, the next Canadian. And the next fight on the card. Ariane de Silva versus Jasmine Jazdavicius. Silva, plus 190 underdog. Jasmine, hometown Canadian, minus 235 favorite. Oh my gosh, how many times am I going to drink this maple syrup, guys? We're doing it again. We're taking Jasmine in the fight. I'm really sipping it. I like maple syrup, too. It's not bad. I like this maple syrup, just not just drinking it, though. Okay. Why am I picking Jasmine? Man, she comes in with these nice little blitzes and she can get technical. She can take, she can do the takedowns. Um, she even subs people herself. And it's hard for me to pick against a Brazilian. And I've done it you know, multiple times in this fight. But when it comes to experience, hometown advantage, um, skill, that's why I'm picking these other fighters, fighters. And that's why I'm picking Jasmine, man. They're both experienced in the UFC. Uh, you know, Silva has a, a you know less of a you know, better record than Jasmine, but Jasmine's violent, man. She's fierce and she's competitive and she's gonna fight for our money. She's that's what she does every single time she fights. She goes out there with heart, man. And that's why I'm picking Jasmine. It's hard for me to pick against her. She's a she's a really solid fighter in the UFC. I see her taking this fight. I bet you the odd makers again have this. Over two and a half rounds. Juice, where are we at? Minus 285. Yeah, I don't see any sort of sub happening. It's definitely going to go to decision, in my opinion. We're probably going to see a lot of decisions um, in this card. But we got Jasmine. Jasmine by decision. Pretty confident pick. And we move on to the next fight. Oh my god, I'm tired of sipping and drinking and blah, 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 blah. Also, I don't even know if this is the exact order um, of the fights because every betting site I've looked on, they have the fights in all different orders and times. It's crazy. So we'll see come fight day what the times of every single fight are. But I wouldn't bank on looking at this and you know thinking that this is the exact order. Anyway, next fight we have Charles Jordan, a.k.a. Air. Versus Victor Henry. 
Charles Jordan, minus 115. Victor Henry, minus 105. This is essentially a pick em at this point. Are there any more Canadians? One. There are two more Canadians. I have three more potential sips right here. And we're taking one of them. We're taking air. All right, we're taking Charles Jordan. Love the syrup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Now, yeah, Charles Jordan has not looked pretty good in his last few fights, but let's recap his last few fights, right? He's going up against Gene Silva, fierce competition. Come on now, part of the um, fighter nerds. Those guys are on a different level. Sean Woodson by split decision. Notable loss. Two, white, uh, two fight win streak and then a loss to Nathaniel Wood. And you're not getting knocked out by like these other guys. Gene Silva has got that knockout power. He's, yeah, that shit was, that shit was crazy. But Victor Henry is just not it. When it comes to a striking battle, I, I feel we got, I feel like we got Charles all day. And Victor Henry's old on the older side. He's 37. In his last fight against Basharai, he is kind of getting teed up. And then he got kicked in the balls, and I feel like he kind of just gave up, right? He took five minutes to recover, and then they called the fight. I mean, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I didn't like it at all. Kind of just felt like you're giving up to me. Like, and if you're giving up in fights, I feel like he knew he was going to lose that fight because Bash Basharai was fucking teeing him up. Got the takedown, too. I don't think this is going to get to the ground, but if it does, Jordan can sub Henry, all right? Jordan's got some good subs in his in his uh, you know, his career. So Charles Jordan is the pick. And we move on to the next fight. All right. Jack Shore, aka Where are we at here? Tank. Jack Tank Shore. Okay, I like your I like your little nickname. Versus Yusuf Zalal, the Moroccan devil. Woo. Jack Shore is the underdog. Plus 210. Yusuf Zalal at minus 260 favorite. Pretty pretty big favorite there. 17-2 and two for Jack Shore. That record is suspect, guys. We got Yusuf Zalal in this fight. Yeah, that, that, that record is suspect. 17-2. and two. His wins are against crappy competition. And he's, he's not looked good in his losses. Right? So, I, I I just, he is so suspect. Yusuf Zalal has looked pretty good in his last two fights. I anticipate this fight getting to the ground. Yusuf Zalal mixing in some, you, you know, nice striking to get the takedown and eventually keep him there on the ground. Jack Shore can defend takedowns here and there, but ultimately the, the, the pressure and the striking combined will get Zalal these takedowns and keep him on the ground I don't see any subs or knockouts here neither of them have that power in my opinion and they both have pretty good chins over two and a half minus 260 see the bookmakers think this is going to decision two and I agree we got Yusuf Zalal minus 260 he is the pick here and we move on to the next fight Hey, another heavyweight fight. We got Alexander Romanov versus Rodrigo Nascimento. Plus 110. Underdog for Romanov. Minus 130 for Rodrigo. What are we thinking here? This is crazy. What Are we thinking Rodrigo's going to get a knockout? Is that why he's the favorite? This is crazy to me. This is going to be... And I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson and I'm hoping... That the lesson pays off in this fight. And here's the lesson, guys. If a heavyweight cannot wrestle and he's going up against somebody who has at least moderately good wrestling and can get him to the ground, it's over. And we've seen this before and I believe this has happened to this fucker. So it's going to happen again. Romanov is going to get a, a takedown at some point or all three fucking rounds. Keep Rodrigo on the ground and go to work. Rodrigo's not going to be able to get back up. It's going to be a kind of a boring heavyweight fight, but that's my opinion. We got Romanov in the fight. What? what hold on, hold on. Look at these nicknames. 
Alexander, King Kong, Romanov. Don't come on now. Now I don't know what this nickname means or translates to. Zay Colmia. That's Rodrigo's nickname. Zay Colmio. Now look. Rodrigo could get the knockout. I mean, he's got power. He's got 11 wins for a reason. They're all by knockout, okay? So, I, if I, if, I wouldn't be surprised if Alexander got knocked out, but he's gotten only been knocked out only a couple of times and by pretty good competition, too. And I wouldn't say, I mean, anybody can get caught, right? And it's a heavyweight fight, too. Things can get crazy fast, but I think it's going to be boring. I think it's going to be a three-round fight. What do the odd maker think? What do the odd makers think? about the rounds over one and a half minus 180 so you know it's closer odds they still anticipated to go at least two rounds maybe roman off by a, a ground and pound ko i could see that too i just cannot not cemento doesn't have good takedown defense in my opinion and is suspect in that area so that's why we're going with that fight next uh, or that pick. Next fight on the card. Serhi Saidi versus Garrett Armfield. What are these? What are these nicknames? No nicknames. Lamo. Come on, guys. You're in the UFC. Pick a nickname. Give me something. Sari City, the favorite, minus 170. Garrett Armfield, the underdog, at plus 140. This is wild to me, guys, because Saidi's unproven. Shut, hey, hey, shut up, Siri. Okay, cancel. Yeah, cancel your shit. My bad, guys. We got. People are listening. <clears throat> Anywho. Sidey. Okay. <laughs> Is suspect. He has not proven himself in the UFC. He had a fight on Dana White Contender Series that he won. And then his first fight in the UFC is against the same exact guy, which in which he lost. So that's basically another Dana White Contender Series fight. You're going to give him a rematch of the fucking last fight? That's fucking stupid. So he's super unproven. Garrett Armfield has at least gone against good competition at the UFC. That last fight against Bam Bam, oh, so close. Back and forth. Should have pulled out the win, but got ultimately subbed. That was a good fight, though. But Garrett Armfield has more um, more experience in the UFC and more power, in my opinion. More technical in the boxing. Good striking. Can get a takedown if he needs it. Now, Sidey, on the other hand, this is why he's the favorite, guys. Because he has got a 5-inch height advantage and a little bit of reach advantage. He's a little more lanky. But that doesn't give you, just because you're taller, doesn't mean that you're more experienced or going to win the fight. You know what I mean? Armfield is the pick. Armfield is the pick. Give me the underdog here. Next fight. <clears throat> oh, okay. Some oldies. Maple syrup's coming out again. We got Chad and Hill gear. Chad and Hill the. And Hillgear. I'm probably saying that so wrong. I'm sorry, Chad. Stick with Chad. Versus Cody Gibson. We're taking the underdog. The monster, Chad. Over Cody Gibson, a.k.a. the Renegade. Yo. Chad's got power. Chad has really good boxing. Again, this is another fucking example of oh just because they're taller and have a little bit of this is a, a pretty good reach advantage here but i just don't see uh, cody gibson winning this fight chad has spirit and heart chad has power too cody gibson has not gone up against the competition chad has give me the monster in this fight man give me the canadian I am going crazy with these underdog picks it's like every single every single fight it's i'm picking an underdog but look this is a this is a, a pretty good card. That's why these odds are so close on every single fight. We got some pretty good fights. 
Some crazy parlays can be made or had. Let's see in the bet section. That's at the end of the video. Anywho, we got the monster, Chad and Hilliger. Helliger and Helliger. And Hilliger. I am not the guy to be saying this shit. That last fight, last fight, gosh. Jamie Lynn Horth versus Ivana Petrovich. No nicknames here. Minus 200 for Jamie, plus 170 for Ivana. I'm done with the maple syrup, guys. We're keeping it to the side here. We're not picking Jamie. We're going with Ivana Petrovich. This is kind of a coin flip to me, and these odds are kind of crazy. I mean, are they thinking that Jamie is the better striker? I think she's going to be bigger in the octagon, even though she's a inch. it says that she's an inch smaller than her and has a four-inch disadvantage in reach. Ivana has good subs and good wrestling, and she's able to get this fight to the ground. That's where I think she'll thrive, and that's why I'm picking Petrovic in this, this last fight here. Um... Another one I probably would not bet on. Another one I'm actually not betting on. Um, it's the first fight to start the card, I guess. See, when I wrote this down, I had Jack Shore versus Yusuf Zalal as the first fight. So I told you, this, it's been crazy. They're switching it like like crazy. So, uh, But the pick's Ivana Petrovic. And that's all the picks, guys. I appreciate y'all tuning in to the picks, but we're not done. We're moving on to the bet section. We just went through all the picks. I'm not writing them down. We're heading straight into the bet section where we make money, guys. We came out profitable last week, and hey, I got some straight bets for you guys. A couple couple combo bets, but mostly straight bets. A lot of dogs, too. The dogs are going to be barking on this card, guys, so... I'm giving these bets out for free. I track my record. Everything's transparent. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you tail everything, let's make this money this week. First pick is Brandon Moreno. We got him at one and a half units for minus 155. Solid pick. Competent pick. Main card. Biggest bet on the last fight of the evening. So it gives us a little anticipation, a little... A um, little motivation to watch all the fights in the cards. So that's not the only reason that I picked him, right? We went over why we picked him, but now we're betting on him. Brandon Moreno, one and a half units at minus 155 is the first pick. Bet, bet. Next bet, we're sorting these by unitages. We're going down to one unit plays. This is my... Oh, Canada. Parlay. Malat Proper plus Mark Andre Power Bar. I wrote this down. We got him at one unit here at plus 110. Hey, positive odds for two confident Canadians on the card. Good play. Next one unit pick, last one unit pick, we got Charles Jordan. One unit. Minus 110. That that fight's essentially a pick 'em, right? And if you're gonna give me 110 odds on who I think is gonna win the fight in a pretty confident play, give it to me all day. Minus 110 on a straight up pick on Charles Jordan. Um, next we have the half unit plays, and I got a ton of these. I got a ton of these. So pick and choose what you want, but I got all of them. Blanche Field. Half a unit at minus 132. Give me my girl. Give me the takedowns. Give me the ground control all day. Maybe even a sub on rows if it's crazy. Next fight, or next play, unit. Half a unit on Derek Lutis. Woo! Yes, sir. Plus 150. The dogs are barking and we got more. We got more. Most of these are actually pretty good odds. So, again, pick and choose what you want, but I'm playing all of them. Jasmine and Zalal. Oh, my God. Plus 104. 
half a unit. Next play, Romanov. Yes, sir. Half a unit. Plus 110. Or 114 I got him at. How about that? Armfield. Half a unit. Plus 140. He's going to have that uh, sighty welcome to the UFC moment. And Hill Higger. Why do I even try and say his name? Chad. Damn, what did I get him at? Hold on, guys. I got to look. Pause. Never been put on the spot like this. What am I doing here? It's crazy. Plus 145. It's nuts. Okay. And then... Last one, Zahabi, half a unit at plus 110. That's all of them. Total units of seven. This is going to be a great fight night card. If you've gotten this far, hey, thank you for tuning in to all the picks and the bets. We always come with that fire. Young Pasty breaking down UFC. Appreciate the support. Um, but hey, here are all the all the bets. Pick and choose what you want. Appreciate you got your guys' support. And we'll see you next time. Let's have a good fight card. Let's go.